greetings and salutations. <laughs> All right, so today I'm attempting a difficult feat. If you have not seen The Bride of Frankenstein, <laughs> I suggest you watch it. But I'm attempting to recreate the look today, hair, makeup, and maybe costume, we'll see. All with things I have around the house and that you have around the house. This may go terribly wrong, so let's just see. I have a few things I have in mind to try to create the hair. So I did a lot of research on this and Elsa Lanchester, I will hope I'm saying that right. I read in an interview with her that it was not a wig, it was actually her real hair that they wrapped, pulled back and wrapped around a birdcage. I don't have a birdcage, <laughs> so I've been looking around my home over the weekend for things that I think could look like that and not weigh a thousand pounds. Because apparently a lot of the makeup creations that Jack Pierce hope that's right, created, um, left the actors with permanent scars. So they were revolutionary and incredible and amazing and he was a genius. But I don't want today to leave me with permanent scars. So one of my ideas that I'm going to try out first was this can here. I thought perhaps this would give me the height required. I might have to move the camera a little bit. So. I have a can opener. I don't drink beer, by the way, nor do I recommend it. This is not my beer can. So I'm just using this can opener to remove the top of the can and hopefully not make it really sharp. I'm not quite sure yet how I'm going to attach this to my head. Hopefully the answers will present themselves. Now I have this can, I rinsed it out, the edges are mostly smooth, I did mess up and get one little sharp bit, but fingers crossed. I'm going to take this brush and just get my hair nice and frizzy, which is really easy because my hair is curly. I actually have this very old fashioned brush down here. Add to the ambiance. <laughs> oh yeah, this is every curly hair girl's nightmare. So I'm not teasing it. I'm literally just brushing the curls out. Okay, we're getting there. Fabulously freaky. Before I start attempting to do the sculpture thing, I need to take out two pieces. So on her right temple, there was a streak here like that yeah i'm gonna get a little clip and then on this side it was like right above the ear yeah that'll do i'm gonna use a little and boop so those are gonna be our our gray streaks so it does go like blah <laughs> that's the sound it makes so i'm gonna kind of like portion this out And um, to be honest, I have no clue what I'm doing. So I don't know if that makes you feel better or worse. <laughs> so maybe I take the parts that are on the outside. Oh, maybe I should cut the other side of the can off as well. Hello, hello, hello. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I use this middle bit and then I'm going through puberty all of a sudden. I use this middle part. Let's see if it's long enough to feed through the can. So I'm using this little hair tie to kind of tie it up a little bit. Now this could very well be an awful idea, we'll see. So I have this like ponytail and I'm just going to see if I can feed it through the can. Now I saw a lot of people doing this 
with a lot of other materials. That looked very clever. Like just doing a bun and stuff. I just wanted it very tall and I have a long hair, so. All right, it went all the way through. We didn't get all of it, but maybe that's a good thing. So I have one of these. You can get them by like the 500. Okay, I'm gonna start connecting the hair and putting it in there. Was that part of my streak here? Yeah, okay, leave her out. Now I have this like extra strong spray to try to keep all this up, but let's try this little rubber band first. And leave our streak out. Stop trying to join that party. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna pull my picture of Elsa back up. Okay, so hers is kind of going more back. I think I'm gonna put this rubber band on and see if it stays. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> perhaps we need to start spraying this in place. So I'm gonna use this got to be glued blasting freeze spray before my leaning tower of hair <laughs> that's currently not being held with anything. I'm gonna unclip my pieces then I'm gonna turn gray. Oh! Definitely turn myself on the face. Or maybe if I stuff the top hair that's too long into the can. I don't know why I feel like that would help. I should just feel a little more secure that way. Is there a way to pin into a can? I definitely should have thought of this first. And gotten some, oh, you know what? That felt like it did something, okay. Perhaps if you know how to use tools, you can get someone to like drill some holes into the can. Folks, we may have a winner. <laughs> so I would say for a whole night's look, maybe the can is not the best of choices. For height, yes. For photos, yes. You know what, I'm gonna make this work. <laughs> Maybe a few more pins. If this baby's gotta stay throughout this whole makeup. I just like the drama. Oh yeah, that feels a little more secure. If you're gonna do the can, prepare yourself with lots of pins and Maybe make some tears in the can. Like you could just go to Michael's and get a cone shaped piece of foam and thread and that would probably be a lot smarter. So to do the streaks, my plan was, I'm like staring at her picture and her hair has like perfect Marcel waves. That this is not. All right, so here's my plan. I take these two pieces take my trusty curling iron boop boop -be doo most people just do the spray which is probably your best bet okay maybe when it comes to this whole hairstyling business don't listen to me so I didn't have the white hairspray but I have white hair mascara. So this might also be a disaster, seeing as how it's gone currently for me <laughs> with the hair. Mm. 
And if this goes terribly wrong while I'm doing my makeup, I know that was the messiest curl ever, I don't care. Then um, I can take the can out and replace it with something else. I'm just stubborn. So this one is, I'm gonna say this one's Cryolin. I know after I just curled that, this might not be the move, but guess what, it's happening. Ooh, that's chunky. <laughs> All right, it's kind of effective. Oh my God, this whole hair. You know, maybe if your hair was shorter, it would work better. I think mine's just super heavy. And I probably should use foam. But like a can isn't very heavy. I thought it was a genius idea last night. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Killing it. Maybe I can just spray it there. All right, I need to get some more bobby pins. This is getting a little out of hand. London Bridge is falling down. <laughs> All right, I have just done something very strange off camera that seems to have weirdly worked. I mean, fingers crossed, we'll see. So I took a whole pack, a brand new pack of cotton rounds. Where are the other ones? And I just stuffed it down <laughs> the top of my hair, all the way down the can. And now it feels more secure. I don't have to tell you. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna try to whiten this up a little bit more. I'm not really satisfied with it. So, you know, maybe I would suggest doing the white spray. I should have got some. I was just trying to use things at home. What are you gonna do? No head banging in this look, I would say. <laughs> I did like a little subtle nod and everything almost fell down. All right. I believe this this one is the Cryolin mascara. Let's see if this is more pigmented. All right, whatever. I'm just gonna pin that up and call it a day. Next on our list, I tried to do a lot of research on what color her skin actually was. <laughs> and that was a difficult thing to find out. So she is portrayed as being Frankenstein colored, but from what I could find, she is actually grayish and not green, supposedly. So that's what I'm going with. If you don't like it, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> so I read a lot about Jack Pierce creating a greenish color for different characters so that it would show up on the black and white camera. But when they colorize it, they do make it look like skin color. The storyline is they had progressed the science of this monster situation and so they knew more how to make her more lifelike so it's really up to your own choices and discretion so i'm going to start with this white from this makeup forever flash color stick so i'm going to pick some of these colors a little bit of this green a little bit of this green i know i just said gray but I'm just gonna go with what feels right a little bit of this yellow and a little bit of this yellow and just to jazz it up a little bit a little bit of this pink I don't know why just because I said so this might turn out to be like a mud color <laughs> let's mix it on the palette Kind of like if someone were to create a fake skin color, which oddly enough is what that just did. You see, it's kind of like a spooky fake skin. Ta-da! What 
weird. That worked out oddly well. <laughs> Considering I just wung, wung it, winged it. All right. I might end up going spookier, we'll see. Now, I did wash this after my poison ivy look, but it seems the green has permanently <laughs> colored this. So I'm not afraid to go over my brows because I'm gonna like paint on the bride's brows. And the costume is meant to be like here, so. Wow, this color I created is oddly too skin-like. I put two different greens. Can we play back the tape? <laughs> it just looks like foundation. Let's make it a little spookier. Don't mind my hair falling forward. So the colorized versions that we have available do have her skin skin colored, but a little whiter. Okay, let's go whiter. Let's take our Makeup Forever flash stick in the highlight zones. There we go, we're done. <laughs> Powder, powder. This is the palette I keep using. I would recommend the Makeup Forever Flash Palette because this one has broken me out before. All right, this is the Fenty Beauty. Sorry, it's so dirty. Lavender Pro Filter Powder. Spank it, spank it, spank it. <laughs> The eyebrows actually, in this colorized version, look to be dark red to match her hair. Well, let's see. Let's see how this goes. I'll start it with a burgundy. I'll start it with MAC in Current, and then we'll see how it, what happens, okay? Okay. Yeah? We have a deal? We got a deal. All right, so hers seem to go about from here, the very bridge of her nose. You could definitely cover your brows first. That may be the wisest idea. Hair, just do your thing. Go back to your home. All right, so it's like, Yeah, we'll need them darker than this. Or more red, less burgundy. And the great thing is, if you want, they don't even have to be even because she's like sewn together. All right, so first I'm looking at the photo of her from the front angle. And now I'm gonna look at this photo of her from this angle.
I don't have my q-tips on hand unfortunately because I'm a fool boop flash thick tip tip it's very interesting because in all these photos she really looks like she has no like extra contour or anything or shadows like they did all that with light interesting all right let's take some more of this powder and get that brow powder down i am gonna um, darken this up with that black brow pencil just because i feel like it'll be a little more effective in the scheme of things let's darken these babies up shall we Not so much a flick as like a schmear. I could obsess over these eyebrows forever, but you know, this one's a little on the janky side today. Therefore, I have just decided I'm going to line the top line of the eye with the same current. Let's, gonna, let's keep it on the same, whatever, you know what I mean. Because I can't see any eyeliner happening here, just lashes. Now, the bottom is lined with the white. You can obviously get very into shading the face, making things deeper and more intense. But I'm looking here and it just does not look to me like she has that. I might try a little bit, so don't, don't get discouraged yet. <laughs> so I'm gonna use Current on the lips and she really has a Cupid's bow situation, very pronounced, so. There's this, which is called Ninza. Then we have these two by Bite. Ooh, Licorice is looking promising. Mm -hmm. And it's nice and pointy mini. Okay, she does have a little bit of like a yellow pallor cheekbone happening. So let's try it in the eye socket. This is from Hip Dot A. And I'm finding this particular color to be delightful. Delightfully vomitose. So let's see what we can't do with her. Even though I don't feel like this is what they did, I don't think it matters. Considering you're not recreating an actual black and white movie, you want to do a cool costume, blah, 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 blah. So I just try some colors that look unhealthy.
kind of like darken under the eye a little bit. You can also take a brush like this, gentle with it. Shadow out the nose a little bit. A little dimple in her chin. But see, shadows with colors like this, like yellowies, they do tend to make you look a little bruisey, which is delicious if you're going for like a undead spooky look <laughs> i'm gonna start with this guy this is mac 224 go into the same bruisey come on here do your thing and just undead up the cheeks a little bit giving a sallow appearance and the her temples are very carved I mean it's subtle Okay, we have this ColourPop, You Had Me at Hello, that has some delightful barf colors, such as her. It's almost the same as what we just used. Let's just get a little bit of that. And then with the smaller brush again, same barf color. And I do apologize <laughs> to any cosmetic company that finds offense in this. I mean it in the kindest way because they are working out very beautifully for this. Okay, I am very feeling that. I feel like she just came to life. <laughs> Let's put a lash on, and then we're gonna try to do these scars, which might be a disaster like this hair. Stop looking at the top of my hair. <laughs> Curling the lashes. L'Oreal Voluminous Primer. Okay, so fun fact. For the Bride of Frankenstein's sounds she makes, apparently, Elsa Lanchester Lanchester? I don't know how to, I think that's how you pronounce it. Was inspired by the sounds of the swans at the park. And so she made a bird sound for the sound of the Bride of Frankenstein. And for the film, they took that sound that she made and played it in reverse, which is why it sounds like <laughs> Oh my god, Lady did not like that. But yeah, I love old movie trivia like that with practical effects, it's so cool. And even though the movie is called Bride of Frankenstein and the Bride of Frankenstein is such an iconic character, she only appears on screen for three and a half minutes. If that, I mean the actual clip, she's only in it. For like a minute that rhymed but she is so dope all right so i have a lot of lashes to choose from so hers are very like what they use in the movies back then very curly 
very long. So this is what we're gonna go with. These are Pink CO Lash number 3D078. I did the mash. I did the monster mash. All right, so we need some scars. Let's get into that, shall we? Okay. Keeping in mind, I have never done this before. I'm gonna take this little lip brush and the lipstick we used and start mapping out where we want the scars. So they go from here. Up. <laughs> I think I went too far. Oh well. And then these cross over. So it goes. <laughs> this is so messy. I'm doing a terrible job. So hopefully yours will turn out better. love this placement now I think if you had that like rigid collision business that this would work out quite lovely but guess what I don't have it so since I don't have that stuff that makes like an indent in your skin I'm gonna just go the makeup route. <laughs> and I'm making a mess. All right, that was current. All right, I'm gonna use the You Had Me At Hello palette that I was just using, this brush. I'm gonna try this purple, you know, right there. <laughs> and just see what happens. My lines are very janky at this point. All right, now I'm gonna do some of this brown. <laughs> I can't point when I'm on camera. Just darken up and they're kind of meant to like sink in and I don't have the proper things for that. Now I'm gonna take a red lip pencil and just go in the middle so that the very middle of it looks a bit more fresh. 
Now I got this at the dollar store. <laughs> it was called Spooky Decor. And so I thought this would be good for like the arms, the bandages. You could also get actual bandages, which I have nearby. We'll see what looks better. Now, if you wanted to like go all in and prepare, you can make a costume. This is kind of assuming that you have not prepared <laughs> and you're last minute like, what am I gonna do for Halloween? Well, I got you. You could probably use the bagged cobwebs for this as well, but I thought these looked kind of like what she has on her arms. In the film, she actually kind of looks like her arms and hands are wrapped in tape. So you, if you wanted to commit to it, it might hurt when you're taking it off. You could wrap your arms and hands in like a masking tape and let me know how it goes. <laughs> I do need to go to the store. Um, <laughs> Do you think it's too far away from Halloween <laughs> to run to the gas station like this? <laughs> I like it because you can stick your fingers through it. So this was my first time doing any sort of a elaborate hair. And you know, she turned out okay. I'm not gonna win any awards, but you know, it is pretty dramatic. So she has these things dangling down. That's what I thought these would be good for. Like when she sees Frankenstein the first time. Friend? Friend? This is my Bride of Frankenstein. I hope you enjoyed my creation, watching me stumble through. And I hope you make your own spooky creations. <laughs>